Biconical Necklace by Senegalese jeweler Modu Fall Tall. A still image of the final necklace is shown. The necklace is a diamond shape created with two cones fused together. There are other circle and small cone-shaped beads on the string of the necklace. The piece lays on a pink piece of paper. It has intricate patterns and shapes on the cones. The artist stands on two bricks of wood a few inches off the ground. Under his toes he stands on a slim piece of brown wood called a draw plate. There is a narrow hole in the wood. The artist uses draw tongs to pull the wire through it to make the wire thinner. Then he takes the wire and twists it together by rolling it in between two pieces of wood. The artist is at his workbench. He has two flat pieces of silver in the shape of a half circle, only two inches big. He lays the thin wire he has twisted on top of the rim of the half circle. This is where he begins to lay out his pattern using strings of wire and wire in the shape of small circles. He uses tweezers to place the wire shapes onto the flat silver half circle. He occasionally taps the wire with the back flat end of the tweezer. The artist begins to cut the thin string of wire to make them shorter. He uses the flat part of the tweezer to roll the thin wire and taps it before placing it on the half circle. He then places five short thin wires on the flat silver sheet, making four triangle shapes. Having all the ends of the wire meet in the middle, and then go outward toward the rim of the piece. He begins to place small circles and semicircles in part of the design. He continues to expand on his pattern using two tweezers to place the small thin wire shapes. He uses a small skinny rod to bend the wire into a teardrop shape. This teardrop will be placed on the flat half circle and used as part of the pattern. He continues to place the small teardrop and circle shaped wire on the half circle. These pieces are extremely small and are moved and adjusted using tweezers. The artist moves the two half circles to his left. A close-up shows small circular shaped wire in between long thin strands of wire at the top. Then, four triangle shapes, each with the same pattern of a teardrop in the middle with circles and half circles around it. Modu is now making granules by first cutting thin wire into tiny pieces. The tiny pieces fall into a newspaper where they collect. There are hundreds of granules in the newspaper. The small pieces of silver are mixed with dampened pulverized charcoal in a white plate. The mixture is placed into a metal container which is then set onto a stove. The charcoals are on top of the stove as a man fans the coals to keep them hot. Embers fly up as he fans. A musical instrument plays in the background outside. The man uses tongs to remove the small bowl from the stove coals. The charcoal and silver pieces cool and are placed back in the white plate. The remains of the charcoal are blown away to reveal the perfect granules. The artist carefully uses his breath to blow the charcoal away and shakes the plate to clear some of the dust. The remaining granules are poured into a brown paper bag. The artist pinches a mixture of borax and water called flux. The flux is drizzled all over the half circle and is heated with a blowtorch at the same time. The flux and heat allows the metals to fuse together. He does this to each of the pieces that make up the entire necklace, four half circle shapes and eight half dome shapes that will be put together to make six beads. There is hammering in the background. After mixing the granules with borax and water, Modu uses a tiny homemade spoon to set the granules in place. The granules are placed in between the patterns, filling the empty space with these tiny granules. Modu gently dries the pieces using fire from a blowtorch. He uses extreme heat so that it turns cherry red, only for a few moments, which allows the granules to fuse into place. Modu trims the edges with shears before forming the cones, then uses a file to clean and smooth the edges. He uses his hands to bend the flat piece into a circular cone shape. He also uses a mold to help him form the cone shape. Then he uses pliers to help him bend the shape. He files the sides of the cone before beginning to close the shape. He uses pliers to line up the edges. He then uses a blowtorch and flux to seal the edges together and create the final cone shape. The artist talks to someone not seen while gently hammering the piece with soft wood to shape the cone further. Both cones are complete and he begins to line them up to create the larger diamond shape. He rubs the wide part of the cone on sandpaper to smooth the edge and prepare it to be connected to the second cone. 
He uses the blowtorch and flux to weld the two cone shapes together. He begins to add loops on the small ends of the cone that will be used to attach the beads and chain of the necklace. He inserts the wire into the end of the piece and twists it to make the circular loop. After completing the necklace and adding a chain, Modu washes the necklace in preparation for the gold plating. He washes the necklace in a blue bin with lots of soapy bubbles. He uses a long, thin brush to clean it thoroughly. Modu begins the 18 karat gold plating process. Using an old transformer, the artist connects one electrical lead to the necklace in his right hand. He connects the other lead to a source of gold in his left hand. Then the two are placed together in a heated liquid solution. This allows the molecules of gold to attach itself to the necklace. He moves the necklace around in the pot. He does this multiple times. The yellow gold plating is given a warm reddish color by immersion in a traditional local concoction called chai. The necklace is placed in a bowl and the chai concoction is carefully poured on top of it. The chai is a dark liquid with pieces of scrap metal and nails in it. The mixture is heated in another large bowl and the necklace is poured into the large bowl. Finally, the piece is set on a pink plate and set out in the sun to dry. A man places the piece on the roof of a small shack. This helps to set the color. A still image pans down of a man holding the completed necklace. The piece has one large diamond shape in the middle made by attaching two cones. The completed diamond shape is about three and a half inches long and almost two inches in diameter. Then on either side of the middle piece is a small circular bead, then a small diamond bead, and another small circle bead, creating a pattern. Then a long twisted chain completes the necklace with a clasp at the top. Screen goes to black as the credit screen rolls and reads, Movie by Mathieu Chimini. Necklace created by Modu Faltal from Pekin, Senegal. Dulhume by Conical Pendant. The Dulhume is a traditional Tukalor piece found in Mali and Senegal. Few jewelers make this style of pendant today. The process takes three days from preparing the metal to finishing the piece. Modu Faltal, 52, was born in Kadjor, Senegal. His parents were farmers. At 16, he moved to the Dakar suburb of Pekin to learn the jewelry trade as an apprentice of Momar Tal, surnamed Pop Tal. It was at that time that Modu learned the intricate techniques used to make the Dulhume, and he has specialized in it throughout his career. <laughs>